US stocks are down this morning on concerns about higher interest rates for longer and a slide in US consumer confidence. That's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And in our bonus deep dive interview, Kuhn Go details what sort of leading indicators for Asia's economies that he follows. I thought it would be interesting to look at uh, the share price performance of the major luxury brands companies to see whether or not it has any lead uh, you know, indication for Asia GDP growth. Uh, and unsurprisingly, there is uh, somewhat of a, a lead correlation. But first, in 5 and 5 with ANZ, number one, US stocks are down around 1% in late trade, weighed down by the prospect of higher for longer interest rates and a slide in US consumer confidence. The S&P 500 was down 1.2% at 4,285. The NASDAQ was off 1.3% at 13,104. And the Dow, it was down 1% at 33,681. This morning's weakness was largely blamed on the surge in Treasury yields since the Fed's decision last week to hold, but hawkishly, and to forecast a high Fed funds rate for longer. However, the two-year and the 10-year Treasury yields haven't moved much overnight. The two-year was unchanged at 5.14% and the 10-year unchanged at 4.55%. However, that 10-year, it's up 20 basis points or so since the Fed's higher for longer forecast last week. Those higher interest rates are also strengthening the US dollar. The Aussie dollar was down to 64.02 US cents this morning from 64.44 cents yesterday. The Kiwi, it was basically steady at 59.52 US cents. Number two, another reason for the weakness on US stock markets was a fall in US consumer confidence in September, as measured by the Conference Board. Its measure fell to a four-month low in September, down 5.7 points to 103. Higher petrol and diesel prices, or gas as they call it there, they were blamed for that fall in confidence. Number three, in Australia, the markets will be watching out for August CPI figures later this morning. ANZ's Head of Australia Economics, Adam Boyton, sees annual inflation unchanged at 4.9% in August from July. So the key in the data we get uh, later this morning will be petrol prices. Uh, We know petrol prices were up in the month of August. Uh, It looks like they'll be up again, for that matter, in the month of September. Uh, So higher petrol prices are going to be moving headline inflation. But at the same time, I think there's likely to be a reasonable decline in the recreation group, and that's driven by lower prices for holiday travel and accommodation. Number four. Adam says if the number is higher than that 4.9%, the RBA will be careful not to react too quickly to a headline jump from petrol prices, for example. The RBA, I think, will be more concerned if... We started to see second round impacts, so prices for, say, retail goods going up because transportation costs were higher, because input costs were higher. We're not there yet, so I think the RBA can look through the first round impact of high petrol prices. And, of course, it's important it's important to remember uh, that for many people, higher petrol prices act like a tax. They sap your disposable income and they prevent you spending money that you might have uh, on other things. So for now, I don't think it's a worry, but certainly... Uh, People will be watching where petrol prices go and what that means for inflation, not just here, but around the world. Number five. And now for a little something off the beaten track, or more like the tar-sealed road, AMZ's New Zealand Economist put out a monthly index called the Truckometer, which takes data from the National Transport Agency, which shows how many trucks go over the key roads every month and how many cars. The heavy traffic index is a leading indicator for GDP production. The light index, which covers car movements, that's a proxy for what consumers are doing. Here's ANZ New Zealand economist Andre Castain. Yeah, the heavy traffic index, much like the rest of the economy, appears to have had quite a strong August. We've had a range of strong data throughout the economy in August, uh, including stuff like electronic card transactions and uh, stuff like pricing pressures and food prices and rent prices. It looks as if there's a bit more momentum in the economy than us or the RBNZ thought. Um, previously, and that means that we're still expecting the Reserve Bank to need to deliver another hike in November. ANZ's Andre Costain there. Now it's time for our bonus deep dive interview. Throughout Asia, we've seen signs of stabilisation in these economies, and even looking ahead, a potential rebound. 
In today's Deep Dive, my colleague Catherine Dyer asks ANZ Head of Asia Research, Kuhn Go, about some of the leading indicators he's been following, including ANZ's new Luxury Brands Index. Well, we noted that uh, for a lot of luxury companies, particularly the European companies, an uh, increasing proportion of their sales is coming from Asia. So I thought it would be interesting to look at uh, the share price performance of the major luxury brands companies to see whether or not it has any lead uh, you know, indication for Asia GDP growth. Uh, and unsurprisingly, there is uh, somewhat of a, a lead correlation. So looking at uh, the three leading European brand companies, uh, LVMH, Hermes, and Dior. Uh, the uh, increase in the market cap over the last year is suggesting that there should be a, a rebound in uh, Asia's uh, GDP growth uh, over the next uh, six to nine months. Uh, historically, the correlation is not too bad. It does broadly track the, the turning points in the economic cycle. And uh, this time around, it's telling us that you know, while growth has been somewhat disappointing in the first half, uh, things look set to turn around over the second half of this year. So you also pay attention to um, semiconductor sales, of course, and something known as the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index or or SOX. So in Asia, uh, exports is an important part of uh, the growth driver. Uh, and in particular, semiconductors has become a very important component of the region's overall exports, particularly for economies like Taiwan, South Korea, and Singapore. So the uh, Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, or SOX Index, which is uh, the uh, performance of the major U.S. listed companies that are involved in the design, uh, manufacturing, and sale of semiconductors has uh, in the past proven to be a very good lead indicator uh, for overall semiconductor sales. Uh, and the SOX index has surged uh, over the last six months, partly on the back of the uh, AI hype. Uh, and that is pointing towards a sharp rebound in uh, global semiconductor sales uh, over the next six months. And we've started to see that sign pick up in uh, the global semiconductor sales and also uh, for the semiconductor exports from Taiwan, South Korea, and Singapore. Uh, So based on where the SOX index is, uh, that's telling us that we should have another six months at least of further upswing in the global semiconductor sales cycle that should help to power the region's uh, exports turnaround uh, into the end of the year. And finally, you've also been following another leading indicator which tracks the performance of leading delivery companies. So what what's that one about? Yeah, so in a similar fashion to the luxury brands index, uh, if you look at the share price performance of the major delivery uh, companies, uh, in this case I've used FedEx, UPS and DHL, they too have tended to provide quite a good lead indicator for the region's exports. And again, it's not surprising if you know container and export uh, goods are starting to pick up, uh, that should be reflected in uh, the, the business activity of the major delivery companies. And FedEx recently did announce uh, that they have seen an uplift in uh, their business, particularly in Asia. So looking at the performance of these three major delivery companies, it is giving a similar signal to what the SOX and our luxury brands index is saying, in that uh, Asian exports look like they have bottomed, and we should be looking forward towards a recovery in the export cycle over the rest of this year. But the Different indexes uh, compiled differently, and the fact that they are all giving a similar signal, uh, I think, is, uh, is a vote of confidence for you know, our view that we've likely seen the bottom of the export cycle in Asia. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Wednesday, September the 27th. Catch you tomorrow with the latest on Australian inflation. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.